Sixth Kriya Meditation upon the light and cerebellum Rotate your awareness around the eighth chakra Perceive a ball of light that makes a circulation around your eighth chakra and then touches the center of this chakra Repeat many times this perception without any mental chanting of mantra Let the ball of light do not come inward after tracing one circle but come down piercing the fontanel at an angle While the ray is coming down raise your chin and feel the ray of light reaching your cerebellum Remain immobile for a few seconds wholly immersed in the intensity of the dazzling white light shining from there to the whole brain Lower your chin without losing the concentration upon the light Rest a moment there and then repeat the procedure Gradually during the next days repeat the experience more and more times The divine light becomes stable at the cerebellum. Meditation upon the light shining in the pineal gland. Perceiving constantly the divine light in cerebellum is a very high state, but you must learn how to go beyond it. Our goal is to learn to locate your pineal gland and enter it. In order to achieve this goal, intuitively condense all the light in cerebellum and direct it toward your pineal gland. This gland is located very near the cerebellum. but slightly forward and above it along a line forming a 60 degrees angle with the pavement a substantial help comes by doing a movement like the one utilized to obtain the coming down of light and focusing it in the cerebellum but more slow and almost imperceptible the movement should be only hinted with no muscular tension at all the last immersion in the light happens after the slight movement when you are almost immobile There is a sort of internal tension that guides you intuitively toward the pineal gland. Repeat and repeat your attempt until you succeed in entering the pineal gland. Here the union with the divine takes place. The state of tattvam asai manifests. During this time of divine oneness, one is devoid of body consciousness and unaware of one's surroundings. After the omkar sound ceases to exist the effulgent form appears. Nothing exists except the sun of the soul. I, Shama Churn, am that Sunday, Lahiri Mahashaya. Chapter 11 Discussions with Students of PY's Correspondence Course This appendix is devoted to those students who are serious about going ahead on the Kriya path utilizing only the techniques that can be obtained by the organizations that spread PY's teachings. 11 Apart from the technique of Kechari Mudra, often quoted in PY's writings and surely practiced by him they don't feel the necessity of mixing PY's techniques with other spiritual procedures they feel they are PY's disciples and believe that by adopting other teachings is equivalent to betray him when i followed PY's teachings a meditation counselor explained that the worst evil was disloyalty toward guru and his organization With the term disloyalty she meant even just reading what other persons who left the organization had written about kriya after posting my book online i had an intense email exchange with various researchers faithful to py after having clarified that they did not approve my decision to write in such explicit way lahiri mahashaya's kriya techniques they asked me how i can be sure that py had simplified or modified some details of the kriya procedures Trying to perceive what was stirring in their heart and mind, I felt that their worry consisted in the possibility they had missed something important, for example techniques not contained in the correspondence course, that PY could have shared only with some intimate disciples. Those Kriyabans were very serious, honest, deeply motivated. No nonsense would ever slip out of their mouths. I learned to listen to them respectfully and silently whenever they corrected some of my fancy interpretations of kriya yoga. Many, without being exhibitionist, were able to quote by heart many passages from the works of PY. They had studied all the kriya material written or dictated by PY and often remembered verbatim key quotations from that material. They had read and reread through those texts several times trying to decode them. They always struck me with their extraordinary commitment to a regular practice of kriya. Although unsatisfied with their understanding of the subtle mechanism underlying the kriya procedures and tormented by many doubts, they never dismissed the practice. 
it was clear that they were following the kriya path not for esoteric curiosities not to find an alternative cure to anxiety depression but for one reason only to follow and realize the spiritual path so fascinatingly delineated in pv's autobiography the greatest part of our discussions concerned the higher kriyas this is perfectly explainable to many kriyabans the crisis with their kriya organization began when their request of having a seminar on the higher kriyas received an incomprehensible anachronistic no the purpose of that seminar had to be not only to demonstrate the technical details but also to give a theoretical scheme providing devotees with resources to conceive and subsequently improve their routine every student wanted at least to see how such techniques were performed each technique included some physical movements if you study them only from a written text you are never sure about your correct performance the meetings organized to review the basic teachings kriya proper plus hong so and om techniques were always a source of inspiration the disappointment of not getting this opportunity also in the field of the higher kriyas was unbearably bitter we had inspiring conversations the purpose of this appendix is to refer in synthesis the main points of those conversations i am confident they contain interesting information The synthesis is divided into four parts. I, a rational approach to yoga and first kriya techniques. 2, a rational plan to work with the higher kriya starting from PY's third kriya. 3, the control of the mind during the day is a necessary prerequisite to master pranayam, control of energy. A rational approach to yoga and first kriya techniques. There are different ways of planning a kriya routine. We discuss here a kriya routine where the well-known techniques of Hong So and Om are practiced at the end. One Maha Mudra, two Kriya proper, three repeating Maha Mudra, Jyoti Mudra, four meditation. Choose one of the following: Meditation one, focus in Kutastha. Meditation two, focus in Kutastha with Hong So mantra. Meditation three. Focus in the spine with Hong So mantra. Meditation four. Om meditation technique, closing the ears. Meditation 